chastising everybody. He, I get it all the time. He, I need to be asking for money. He's always asking for money. You have to listen carefully. <laughs> you have to listen carefully. He's not listening carefully. Listen carefully. He's always asking for money. Meantime, you'll stay at home and you haven't worked a day in the last 15 years and you're living off the government handout and welfare and someone else is working hard to make ends meet and working hard to fulfill their vision and dream and you sit in judgment of that person. Sweetheart, let me give you some counseling. Get up. Take the log out of your own eye. It's called the sin of gluttony and laziness. And then you'll see clearly that the man may not be fundraising. He may be perpetrating the king, trying to further the kingdom of Yahweh. But you can't see that until you have a, a, a character change, a heart change. That goes for all of us. We got to deal with our issues. So first, we remove the plank in our eye so we can see in the Ruach. Does that make sense? Yes. We can't see things in the Ruach if we don't take the planks out of our eye instead of looking for the speck in our brother's eye. Matthew chapter 7, 8. So how do, we find, how do we get character change to find it? Psychiatrist, counseling, or medication? Which one? Which one? None of the above. We, we take the first step. How do we have character change? If we desire character change in our life, how do we get it? We take the first step. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Now watch this. Matthew Yahweh 7 8. For everyone, Yahweh is no, Romans 2 11, Romeyan 2 11, Yahweh is no respecter of persons. Here's the beauty of taking the first step. Here's the beautiful part of taking the first step. Yahweh is not a respecter of persons. Matthew Yahweh 7 and 8. For everyone, Turn your neighbor and say everyone. everyone. For everyone who asks, receives. He that seeks, finds. To him that knocks, it shall be open. You first ask, seek, find, knock, then Yahweh will make sure things happen. But until he sees you seeking the promise, seeking the hope, looking for the vision, taking the first step, these are all metaphors or euphemism to describe the act of taking the first step. If I tell you, get up and seek, get up and find, get up and knock, get up and do something, it's all metaphors for take the first step, amen? And what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? It shall be open, Ted. What do you mean it shall be open? Your dream, your hope, your vision, your goal, your desire. It'll be open. But not until he sees you knocking. And you may have to do all, all of them at the same time. Knocking, seeking, searching. Finding. Finding beams in my eyes. Knocking on doors that I'm scared to knock on. Seeking people that I'm most intimidated by. Seek, knock, find. Then, when? Then, when? Then, when? Then. Then it'll be open. Not stay put, don't move until the, till the Lord opens the door. And that's the Sunday mentality. Don't move, brother. Don't launch out. You don't want to run ahead of him. You don't want to run ahead of him now, no? Because it's not it may not be his season. Well, guess what? If it's not his season, he'll close the door real quick. But you won't know if it's his season until you take the first step. So when Yeshua says, let's read that again. It's very important. When Yeshua says, everyone who asks, receive. What is it asking? First step. What he that seeks will find. First step. Not second, third step. They're all metaphors for the first step. To him who knocks, it shall be opened. You knock, you seek, 
You search, you ask for the first step, and it shall be opened. Matijahu 7.24. Matijahu 7.24. Pardon me. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I would liken him to a wise man who built his bayit upon a rock. The rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat upon that bayon, and it fell not, for it was founded upon the rock. How do you preserve your house in Yahweh? How do you preserve your future in Yahweh? How do you preserve your foundation? The house speaks of foundation. How do you preserve your foundation in Yahweh? What you do is you listen and you obey. When the word, listen, I, let me tell you something. When Yahweh is speaking here in, in the Kehillah through the prophetic word, to me it's Yahweh talking. If I'm listening and I think it's Stefania's flesh, or it's uh, Brian's flesh, or, or somebody, I'm not going to get anything out of it. I'm not going to take the first step. I'll be sitting there wondering if it's from Yahweh or not. You can't approach the things of Yahweh that way. When you hear me talking, you have to assume that Yahweh is speaking through me. You have to assume that, because if you don't, if you don't you're not going to get anything out of it. And if Yahweh is not speaking through me, eventually you'll know that. Correct? Correct? And that goes for any of us. Now watch this. Yeshua said, those who hear, there are two kinds of people. Those who hear the word, don't do it. Those who, like, like a lot of folks, those who hear the word, Torah, and do the word, that's the person who, who will be blessed. So before we find out what kind of believer we are, listen, before we find out if the house we're building spiritually will stand when the trials and difficulties and circumstances of life come, before we find out what kind of spiritual house we're building, we have to know one thing. Are we taking the first step? If we're taking the first step and we're obeying what we do know, Yahweh will reveal to us what we don't know, and Yahweh will make sure that when we zig, I cannot tell you how many mistakes I've made in my life, even in my ministry, but I have never, Yahweh has never penalized me and punished me for making a mistake. And neither will he with you. If you take the first step, say, my character, I, I'm a very judgmental person. I'm very unstable. I'm very this. I'm very uh, frightened. I'm very this. Father, re re mold my character. So then, then Yahweh will show me the things that I need to know. You, you follow me? And then I don't know. So, so first, you obey his word, and then he gives you a foundation where you're not shaken. So how do, we, how do we establish ourselves to where we're not shaken with every wind, every opinion, every comment? I used to be the same way, trust me. I used to have a great day. Everything's going fine. Every, you know, good day, good food, good money, good friends, good this. And one guy cut me off in traffic, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, Gave me the finger, and that's it. The rest of the day I was bummed out. I had to go into the house, lock the door, take the phone off the hook. I couldn't talk to anybody. I was depressed. I was having a great day. I met 45 people who blessed me and wanted to love to be in my presence. And one guy gave me the finger on the road, and I collapsed. I mentally collapsed. Sound familiar? I'm not like that anymore. Yeah, we changed me. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. How do we change? Verse 24. First, we do his word, don't miss this, and then the spiritual house is fortified. Right. The spiritual foundation, the spiritual house is fortified. In other words, stability and fortification, he sowed, foundation of the Sephardic tree, comes when we first take the first step. What's the first step? Obey what you do know, and Yahweh will make sure you have a firm foundation. Amen. That's the first step. Don't wait for more revelation, more cassettes, more teaching, more prophecy, more conferences, when we haven't taken the first step on what we do know to obey. Live up to what you <laughs> First we do his word, Yeshua said, then the foundation comes. The foundation can, that can withstand rain, wind, and all the other things. Mati Jahu 8, all the trials and tribulations of being a believer. Mati Jahu 8, 2. Is anyone enjoying? Yeah. Yahweh is waiting for you to take the first step, part 2. 
Uh, uh, Rob, this is part two. Are you making note of this? I'm in. All right. This is part two. To hear that, yes? You understand? This is part two. Don't pray about it. Just, it's part two. Mighty Jow 8 2. You see, there came a leper, worshiped him, saying, Master, if you will, you can make me clean. Will you heal me? The leper came and worshipped. He didn't go to the leper. He took the first step. He didn't just worship. He walked to Yeshua. And then he got, he was made whole. Mati Jahu 8.5. Mati Jahu 8.5. When Yahshua had entered into the city of Nahum, there came to him, circle those words, there came to him a centurion begging him, beseeching him, saying, Master, my abbot lies at home, sick of paralysis, grievously tormented. Yeshua said, I will come and heal him. Why? Because we go back to verse 5. Because the centurion took the first step. Why was Yeshua willing to make house calls? Because the centurion, a non-Israelite, took the first step. Make sense? Yes. Hear me loud and clear, brothers and sisters. Nothing will get accomplished in the kingdom through you until you take the first step. I don't care. I don't care what it is. Even our sister Sherry, I, and I told her, and I was angry with her. But now she's going to get healed. Now, I could have prayed. I would have kept praying. I would have done my part, and we would have kept laying hands on her, anointing her with oil. We would have done our part. We wouldn't have stopped, right? But she had to take the first step. She's going to get healed. I believe it. And at worst, she's going to have years added to her life. In a worst case scenario, she's going to have years added to her life. Why? She took, she did something. And when she wasn't taking the first step, we were going crazy. Now, if we were going crazy, how about the father? It's frustrating. You know, we just, I can, but I, I can't violate my laws of gravity, and I can't violate my laws of healing, and my laws of deliverance, and my laws of working in the lives of my children. Amen? Amen. Amen? Sherry took the first step. And the devil, boy, he, the second step is easy. She's probably got a hotel. She's probably undergoing treatment. She probably is feeling a little bit better. Yahweh's not, now Yahweh took over. Yeah. Now Yahweh took, Yahweh took completely over. Yahweh's completely taking over. Now it's out of Sherry's hands. Right? Amen. Isn't that a good place to be? Amen. When something's out of your hands and it's in, 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 in his hands? The best place to be. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Go to verse 16. Mati Yahweh 8, 16. When the evening had come, they brought to him, circle those words, they brought to him many who were possessed with Shadim, demons. He cast out the Shadim with his word and healed all that were sick. How many, how many did he heal? All. all who were sick. Why? They all came to him. They took the first step. Hallelujah. Even deliverance. We see that every time, in every time in this congregation. I don't need deliverance. She does. You know what that is? There's a big log in your eye. And you see all these splinters. You know, he needs deliverance, she needs deliverance. I don't need deliverance. Why? Because I'm comfortable being miserable. I'm comfortable being depressed. I'm comfortable. But I'm used to it. I don't know if it's good, but I'm used to it. You'd be shocked how many of us need deliverance. I'm sure there are areas in our life I can use a good deliverance cleaning. Everyone has some areas in their life. Oversensitivity, unforgiveness, uh, confusion, whatever is something that plagues you. Quick temper, whatever, whatever, whatever it is. Are we all willing to go through deliverance? No, because we're not, we're not, we're not homosexuals cruising the gay bars, and we're not in prison, so we figure we're okay. We figure we're okay. We've never been to prison, so we figure we're okay. 
and yet there are bondages in our life, and yet we're antisocial sometimes, myself in some instances, and we don't can't do this, won't do that, can't go there, won't do there, have to go there so no one sees us. We can't go there because too many people will see us, but we have to go there because that's the only place people will, be, people will see us. And so now all of a sudden, you, you can't even walk out the door because the neighbors are going to see you. Well, wait a second. So in other words, and you don't need deliverance, right? No, just 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 the, just those 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 homosexuals who cruise the gay bars. They, they need deliverance. Yeah, but you can't go out of your house during the day because the neighbors are going to see you. You have to wait till night, right? I know I'm not talking to anybody. I know that. <laughs> Sweetheart, you need deliverance, and until you humble yourself and take the first step, it's not going to happen. That goes for all of us. That goes for all of us. In being overbearing and being an overbearing parent, I've had to learn to let my children talk back to me once in a while. And that ain't easy, because I am a very bossy, overbearing person. No, you can fool me. But I had to but I, but I had to learn, see? Sometimes a little talk back has to be tolerated. Or else there's no communication. Right? So we learn. We all learn. We all need deliverance in certain areas. Okay. So we go back to where we were, verse 16. So we'll circle those words. They brought to him those possessed with Shadim. He didn't go looking for demons. <laughs> they brought the people with, possessed with demons, Shadim, to him. Is that, and a lot of religions are not like that, right guys? They go looking for demons. I, I, I feel there's this demon, I feel there's a demon under the carpet, under the chair, there's a demon of cushion and cotton, and there's a dish, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a demon of fiber chairs, you know, and aluminum, there's an aluminum demon. A dodge so, you know, demon. A dodge demon, right. So, so dodge ram, pick up demon. So, you know, and Yeshua said, don't look for demons. You think someone's got a demon? Take the first step. Bring them for deliverance. They won't go. Go. Take the first step. Put them in the car. I hope you're getting this. Matthew chapter 821. Matthew chapter 821. And another was Tom Medim said to him, Rabbi, allow me first, here's my first step, to go bury my Abba, who just died. But Yahshua said to him, no, 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 no. Here's your first step. Follow me. And then let the dead bury their own dead. You're alive as my follower. Amen. You follow me. Let the spiritually dead bury the spiritually dead. Amen. So he says, look, he says, he says, sure, look. First, I'm going to take the first step, get rid of my father's corpse. I'm going to bury him, and then I'll follow you. She sure said, no, you got it all wrong. wrong he said, first step is come after me, and then let all the other dead folks who are already spiritually dead bury their own dead, but you go preach the kingdom. He said, no, but I won't, be, I won't be mentally prepared. I'm grieving. I'm grieving. I can't get over this until I bury my dad. I put him to rest. And then I'll take the first step, the second step to follow you. Yeshua said, no, don't take the second step to follow me. Take the first step to follow me and let someone else bury your dad. Now, that may sound very um, harsh, but Yeshua is not trying to be harsh. He's trying to show the point. Understand? If you want all of me, you've got to take the first step. Baruch Hashem Matthew 8, 25. His Tommy game came to him, he was on the ocean, on Galil, and woke him saying, Master, save us, help, we perish. Verse 26. He said to them, why are you fearful? O oh, ye of so little emunah. He arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was great calm. Notice, they thought they were perishing, and they could have rowed the boat, they could have motored the boat, they could have moved the boat, they could have, they could have done a million different things. But what did they do? They came to him, they took the first step, and he took care of their fears and their storm. Hello? He took care of their fears and their storm. Hallelujah. 
Because they didn't start rowing, they didn't start getting a motorboat, they didn't rent a canoe, and they didn't look for a life jacket. <laughs> First, they looked for a life jacket, then they noticed the rabbi was in the boat. No. First, they, they woke him up. They took, they... They took the first step. They woke up the rabbi. They woke up the rabbi, and they took the first step. Baruch Hashem and you'll see this throughout scripture. Yahweh never violates, it's a spiritual rule. Write it down. It's a spiritual law. Now, Christianity says, oh, that's just humanism. That's just secular humanism. God helps those who help themselves. Well, guess what? There is some truth to that. But let's be more specific. Yahweh, not Toad, as in Toad and Rose. Yahweh is bound to help those who take the first step. Now the world calls it helping themselves. Yahweh says, I'm bound by covenant, by the blood of my son's covenant. That if you take the first step, I may have to take a million, but I'll take them. How many steps did Yahweh have to take to get you to where you are today? You used to be this, you used to be that, but no, not anymore. You used to be a drunkard, but not anymore. You used to be an extortioner, but not anymore. Now you're washed, sanctified, set apart, Israel, brand new, renewed, new name, Hebrew name, new Moadim, new festival, no, a totally new and renewed lifestyle and mind. How many steps did Yahweh have to take to get you where you are today? One million. Now, if he took all those steps, what makes you think he wants to stop now? He... He enjoys taking more and more and more steps. He enjoys it. It is written, the eyes of Yahweh search around the earth, looking for someone upon whom and through whom and for whom he can show himself strong. It brings him pleasure to take the steps that you can't stay take. Remember that footprint poem? Sand, footprints in the sand? Where were you? Where were you, Rabbi? Where were you? He goes, I was carrying you. I was taking all those steps. I was carrying with you all the time. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Mahi Yahweh 28. Am I preaching good today? Right. It must be the it must be the restoration of scriptures. And when he had come to the other side, into the country of the Gergeshites, Matthew 8, 28, there met him, listen, there met him two men possessed with Shadi, coming out of the tombs exceedingly fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. And see, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with you, Yeshua, son of Elohim? Are you come here to torment us before the time? And so we see that he had come to the other side. There met him two men. There met him two men. Did you get that? You know those Shadim that wound up in the pigs? Before they came out of the pit, went into the pigs, they came out of? Two men. The two men came to him, even though he crossed the sea to them, listen, even though he crossed the sea to them, what happened? The two men, what? Possessed with Shadim, came out of the tombs. You're still not listening. They came out of the tombs. He didn't say... Where's the local graveyard? I have uh, I have my allotment of miracles. I got five miracles, and I have a f so I can have a full allotment. They came out of the tombs to meet him, and then they got delivered. You show me where Yeshua goes to anybody or chases us. We take the first step. I don't care if it's business. I don't care if it's marriage. I don't care if it's relationship. I don't care if it's forgiveness. I don't care if it's reconciliation with your daughter or with your children. I, Yahweh is waiting for you to take the first step. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then he'll do what you can do. And especially when it comes to such things as 
deliverance. We have people, I want to change, Rabbi, you the man. You the man. Whatever you say, I do. Whatever you say, I do. <clears throat> 60 days, 90 days, 120 days. You want me outside the camp? Yes, sir. Aye, aye, sir. Aye, aye, aye. But then, 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 brother, brother, bless the people how Yahweh has changed you. You took the first step to change. Come up, share where you were and where you are now. All right, forget that. Forget that. Come for deliverance. Come for deliverance. Come to Yeshua. Come to Yeshua's representatives. They'll help you. They got better things to do on a Sunday. They they have families. They have a busy schedule. But they'll meet you here and help you. Five hours, six hours, eight hours. All right, all right sir. I'll be there. Don't show up. You see, this is what's happening here. Do you understand? Yahweh will never deliver someone who cannot and is not willing to take the first step. I don't care who they are. I don't care what their name is. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Okay, Matich Yahoo 9, 2. But you know something? Everyone who takes the first step gets delivered. Did you know that? On a positive note, everyone who takes the first step gets delivered. Everyone who is coming to ch for a change of life, they're sick and tired of going around in this circle of sin and violence, you know, this cycle of sin and repent, sin and repent, sin and repent. They come forward, they come for deliverance, they get healed. <clears throat> everyone who comes to Yeshua, when they take the first step. Matijahu 9-2. I'm sorry, Matijahu 834. Matijahu 834. See, the whole city came out to meet Yahshua. And when they saw him, they besought him that he would depart out of their coasts. Here we have, listen, an entire city. What city? City of the country of the Gergeshites. An entire city came to Yeshua. Hallelujah! <clears throat> You know, the church has it right, but they don't even know they have it right. Did you know that? You've got to come to the Lord. They're right. But now, if that's true for evangelism, why isn't that true for daily victory? And coming to the Lord is not necessarily going into a, a six-foot tower and praying. It is acting on something in this word, Ted, that has already been revealed. The Great Commission has been revealed. Evangelize the lost has been revealed. People have are get saved because people are acting on the revealed word. <clears throat> Evangelism is all about taking the first step. Will you accept Yeshua as your personal savior? Isn't that taking the first step? Well, how come all of a sudden when we become Talmudim, that principle breaks down? Now, just pray. Just fast. Even fasting, you've got to take the first step. Anoint your face and watch yourself so no one in the world knows it except you and your and your heavenly Father. Even even then, you got to take the first step. And as soon as someone knows you're fasting, you lost your deliverance, and you lost your victory, and you lost your possibility. As soon as someone knows. Start again, and this time, don't tell anybody. Buru Hashem Yahweh. So here we have an entire city coming to meet him. And yet, look, they besought him that he would depart from their coast. See that? So it's not just taking the first step. It's, it's being sincere. Isn't that funny how Yahweh just gave us that scripture? What I was just talking about, people who say, yes, sir, yes, captain, you the man, right? You the boss. Yes, sir, you the man. I submit to you, Rabbi. You know that. You know that. Oh, yeah, I know that. But I, but I want you to know that, Rabbi. I just want you to know that. I'm with, I submit, Rabbi. Look here. Isn't that interesting how Yahweh gave us this verse? Here's the whole city came to meet him. And then, when they, instead of t saying, we, we'll take the first step and change our life and follow you, what do they do? Go away. They beg him to go away. Did you see that? 
love our life. We love our. We love what we do. Exactly. We like raising unkosher animals. Exactly. <laughs> we love raising pigs and feeding them. So you ruining our income. And getting dirty with them. Look, the whole city came to meet him, but what? They came to tell him off. So they took the first step, but they were not sincere in that step. Is it enough to take the first step? No. It's got to be a sincere first step. Doesn't that make sense? It's got to be a sincere step. Baruch Hashem Yom. Matijahu 9-2. Is anyone enjoying? Yeah. I'll try that again. Is anyone enjoying? Hallelujah! Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Matijahu 9-2. That's better. Hallelujah! I gotta take that first step to wake up. Matijahu 9-2. And see, they brought to him a man thick from paralysis, lying on the bed. And Yeshua, seeing their emunah, said to the sick from paralysis, Son, be of tov ruach. Your sins are forgiven. Hallelujah! What's the point? Verse 2. The paralytic could not come to Yeshua and take the first step. Why? Why couldn't he take the first step? He's paralyzed. No kidding. No kidding. But he had friends. But he had first step friends. Okay. Listen, yeah. if you're not a first step Nazarene, find some friends who are first step Nazarene. Because they will serve you in good stead all okay. the days of your believing life. You, you can't go for deliverance. You can't go for counseling. Your friends will bring you there. Find some first step friends.